this woman in front of me decided she'd try and get through a red light and then halfway through she thought it was a bad idea. She hit her brakes and she stood in reverse. I'm just waiting for her to <laughs> lift the uh, clutch off and back up under me. She hasn't changed out of reverse still. Well, she did too. She bloody did. How you going, everybody? This is my brother, you probably remember Tristan. Hey guys. It's about, what, three years ago? Two and a half. Two and a half, yeah. Okay, so I mean, anyway, uh, this morning we're heading down to the Bucket of Hairy Arseholes. That's my old uh, Cowrie Hole launch. I was going to say lunch. Launch and lunch. I think that's about the same, eh? No. <laughs> Are you sure about that? L U N C H. Ah, uh, yeah, 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 right. The launch yeah. is L A U. L -A -U. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. <laughs> Guess which one of us has the most education? Uh, yes, so you're right. Launch and lunch, two different words. That, that explains why they mixed up. They do they are spelled differently. Anyway, we're heading oh, yeah. down there. We'll see you down at the uh, Grossy Point <laughs> lunch. <laughs> we're going down to. We're going to have lunch on my launch today. Yeah. I'm launching a brand new YouTube channel. It's about my launch. It's going to be doing a, a uh, catch and cook, mostly featuring lunches. Not yeah. for the dogs, bro. It's for you. All right. Yeah, we don't uh, leave roadkill around here. There's a big one too. Oh, mate, got a bit stuffed up. A yeah, nice buck. Bunch, bro. Awesome. Rabbit stew. Oh, there's nothing wrong with it. It's winter, you know. Yeah, cool. So Murray's going to buy the boat, he's going to pay it off over a period of six months and uh, be sorry to see it go, but I'm going to help him with it because there's a few things that still need doing, so we're going to have it around for a wee while, going to miss it really, but also be glad to get rid of the old girl as well and just showed him all the things that needs doing and I'll try and help him with that too. It's uh, been a, a romantic notion owning a wooden boat, though a lot of work. If you're living on one, great, but if you're not living on one, then you've got to be going at it once a week and running it. Murray's going to, he's got a uh, mooring in town, he can live on it, so he'll better do all those little jobs that build up. You really have to be there, I reckon. When I was living on the houseboat, it was easy each day when I was there. I could just do a little bit of this, a bit of that, but this one here is sitting out there. She's not taking on any water at all, which is brilliant. Council says we can't have anybody live in it, we can't use it for storage, but it didn't say that we can't have a coffee in there. So my brother Tristan and I are going to go out there, have a coffee, and talk family stuff. I don't know how many of you guys uh, are watching this have siblings, brothers and sisters, and how much you see them, but uh, my bro's a good bastard. He took time out to come and see his brother, made an effort, put a week aside, which is pretty bloody awesome, and I appreciate it. We get caught up in our lives and we don't often think about family and things, but the reality is that we don't last forever and uh, it's good to make time for each other, the people you love in your life, so I appreciate them coming. And this is a really nice place to have a coffee. It's got a good view, look at this. Yeah, here, there's the view from up here. I'll pan around. Pretty nice, eh, bro? Pretty damn nice. Yeah. Be great. Now, if a neighbour who complained about this is watching, uh, that's called the council and they come around here and all that, because you didn't like me putting my boat on my land so I could work on it. So cheers, and I hope you're having good health and life's treating you well, and you're feeling happy. What do you reckon that coffee? It's nice, it's good. Yeah, it comes from Australia. That's from Chloe. She sends me coffee, and it's just a delicious coffee. It's from her, mm -hmm. her cafe. When we got this boat here, uh, it was, we've got a video on it, but it was a transporter and a hundred ton crane to get it here. We built a structure, we lowered on it, and the reason we did all that was uh, I was going through a wee bit of a, a health bump and I couldn't do everything myself and we needed to fit things like these straights to go on the front and to be replaced. They've got Arb to build those for us. We've got a whole pile of them down here. And now we've been able to just slowly tick away and do the wee jobs on it. 
one of the big jobs that I've done myself, and I'm proud to say that I, I actually fixed it because I employed two builders and neither they could. As you can see, the roof is stained up here. That's where the water came through. And I can report to you guys there is no more water coming through. It's just the old staining, so we can now paint over that. And that's the job my daughter Dave is going to do when she comes back from overseas. I'm going to call her because she needs a job to get this back up to what it was. And in the future, one day, I'm going to put it back on the water and live on it again in the estuary of Mapu, and I'll go between here and the Able Tasman National Park. That's a dream for the future, but right now we're just doing all the work to get it back up. Anyway, cheers guys. Uh, we'll have a coffee and uh, just sort of share that a little bit with you. Ah, oh, good stuff. What we're doing today is we're putting uh, some posts and wire down there. You can see the gate down there, probably not, but Pace, my dog's been, he's currently limping. I don't know what's wrong with him. He's been uh, going over, and so is Bigsy, running over the neighbour's place. This is a place in the fence they can get out, so we're just going to block that up. Because it's uh, a problem. Uh, we're just talking about things that motivate us in life. My brother said to me, what is it that's made you work so hard your whole life? And I said to him, well, I think it's the same thing that everybody does. We do everything in our lives mostly to avoid pain and also to get love. Would you add anything to that, bro? Um, yeah, yeah, I'd say that love, love is also a motivator. So often when you meet someone, um, that, person, that person can bring you alive if you're a bit dead. Not you're a bit dead for any, a number of different reasons, but yep. love is also a massive motivator. So, so falling in love is something which can really motivate you and make you come alive. You know, there's yeah. been millions of songs written about that, what I just said. Oh yeah, no, and also people heal a lot better when they're in love. Yeah, you get a lot more healing yeah. from you when you're Absolutely. in love. Uh, having someone abandon you at your time of need is one of the worst things. And I know all about that, and it, you don't heal as well. That's why it's really important to also have community around you and friends around you and mates around you. You can see we put some wine netting down here. Tristan thinks that the dogs can get through there. That one there. Yep, he's looking at it. Yeah. Right there. Yeah, this one here. Yep. Put a post down there, bro, across at the top there. See if we can jam it in there. Yeah, it's like that, so long as the dog can't get through. Oh, Big C's like, what's going on down here, eh? You're not going to get through there now, are you? The other day, the neighbour's greyhound was over there and was walking him and he ran under there and went flying up the paddock to attack the greyhound and I whistled him back and he stopped on, a, on the whistle and came straight back. It was really good. So he does actually listen. Oh, that'll probably last five minutes. We'll see what happens. She looks a bit rough. She looks a bit rough. That's right. Probably the next big flob we have. We get a whole blockage of shit and it gets pushed out. You there there? Oh, right. That's a bullet. And it's not that old either. Something's gone through there. It's a bullet. I've had a headshot and I've missed it. And it started to heal up, but it's not that old. It has been shot. So it wasn't hit by a car? No, it's been hit by a car. Oh, yeah. But that's a, that's a bullet. Oh, right. Someone's had a shot at it and oh, okay. it's got away. Anyway, it's dog tucker. Now, it's a male. These they look cute when they're dead. What? I said they even look cute when they're dead. Yeah, it looks like they've got bright eyes. Those eyes aren't very bright, are they? <laughs> no. If that's your idea of cute, bro, I don't know. They're not very cute to me. You don't want any of this, Super Duck. No, you don't. You don't want any of this, mate. No, you don't. Ooh, tail's wagging. My tail ain't wagging, eh? What's the matter, bro? What? Yeah. What? He's not so cute anymore, is he? No, but it's in bits of the dogs. Here, Poe. Eat up. Eat up, Poe. Yeah, that's good, isn't it? Back leg. Cheer to that. Mixie, you get the torso, mate. Yeah, look in your lips. Yeah. That's got all the good stuff. It's got all the heart, lungs, and liver, kidneys, yeah, and brains. There you go, mate. Cheer to that. We'll give Poe another leg. Yeah, Poe. There you go. Here's another leg, mate. Just there. Get up. Good dog. Good kill. Always good tuck on it, eh? Good boy. Straight into the guts. Pace gets a front leg and a back leg. Good boy. In the box. We'll give this one too. Can we get the box from here? Probably not. Bigsy loves rabbit. All oh, those bones getting broken up already. 
Good for his own bones, lots of calcium, marrow, all the good stuff. Yeah, he's enjoying that. Good tucker. Old ducky on the prowl for some odd bits that might just uh, have fallen off. And there goes Super Duck. Looking for something to chew on. You don't want rabbit, guys. Pose in a cave, having a good old chomp. He's enjoying that. So I'll let the skins on. They can sort it out. They don't mind. Just like in the wild. No different. Sometimes they even eat the fur, sometimes they don't. But Poe's uh, just going to break those bones right down. That, female, that bone that goes, the female that goes through there. These ones are called Aztec. Murray grew them on the orchard here. They're pretty tasty. When they're uh, tree ripened like this, they have a sort of a high sugar content. It's quite a lot, so I just get the small ones. Otherwise, it's a bit too much sugar. We're going to take these off soon and make some apple cider vinegar. You can see that it's uh, crystallised. That's uh, sugar. Then, if you leave them on tree longer, it crystallises more. And it's really, really sweet. Good morning, team. It's just another beautiful day in paradise. And Poe's going underneath the gate instead of through it because you can. How you doing? My bro and I on the farm just chilling. He's munching on an apple, a tree ripened apple. He's gonna have a big sugar high in a minute and start acting a bit weird because that's what happens. Get a bit of sugar on him and he's, he's like he's on Bloomin' Charlie. <laughs> he loves the old sugar, my bro. Don't you? What's up, bro? I was just saying, when you have those apples, you get onto a big sugar high. Oh, hell yeah. Yeah, he starts acting like he's a, just uh, had some. Turn into an incredible hop. Some A class drugs. Good dog. Good dogs. You're blowing some bubbles, mate. <laughs> He's blowing some good bubbles there. Wait for the command. He's what? Lift your hands up, bro. What's that? Lift your hands up. Leave it, bro. Are you ready? Stop. Oh, Pace has taken us away. Pace has already got onto it. What are you doing, Pace? Oh, he's, he's, he's doing it in private. <laughs> he didn't wait for the command. What are you doing in there, Pace, eh? He can wait. Sorry, he eh? He's hiding his face. Oh. Old Pace has been watching my brother and he's worked out he can pull one over him. The bro fed the dogs this morning and Pace isn't stupid. He's like, ah, this guy's not watching me. Right, eh? We're going to give Super Duck a wee treat this morning. Here you go, mate. Here you go. Who's going to get this? Is it going to be you or is it going to be Ducky? He's shaking. Here you go. You want that? Here you go. I'll put you on, eh? Gotta be fast here, Ducky. That's for you, buddy. The old posse, um, that's a well, treat. Hand, eh? Oh, Ducky will eat out of my hand. She'll wag her tail and she's happy. Who's gonna eat that? Ducky? Who's gonna eat that? There you go. Who's it gonna be? You want it? I'm not gonna cut your head off, it's okay. You're a mate. Duck, 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 Oh, don't pull it away, bro. You're putting your hand away. Don't grab your finger. Oh, don't be a pussy. It's a duck. Come on. <laughs> Put your hand out, for God's yeah, sake. You've been bitten by a duck before. <laughs> you silly boys. You cracked me up. Hold your hand there. Did it eat it? Poor old duck. Got it shaking. It's scared of you, and you're pulling your hand away. Oh, fuck. <laughs> I dropped mine. Oh, there you go. oh that's you hilarious. Say. Well, other than put nets over my bloody plants, what can you do to stop the sparrows shredding all your broccoli and stuff like this? I mean, look at that. This plant's going to be dead soon. Was that a slug? What the hell's that? That's a fucking slug. You, you can go to the ducks. Do you mind giving that to Ducky or Super Duck? They love slugs. Oh, really? Yeah. Okay. Thanks. You can see they've smashed my silver beet. Oh, it's going to take a little bit off this morning. Might as well take some before the actual birds eat the rest of it I think they call us in America Swiss chard I think I'm not sure and these beetroot leaves actually you can eat those too nothing wrong with them still grows a beetroot and these plants underneath the nets well it's a different story this uh, bok choy it's in good nick it hasn't um, suffered at all it's actually in good I'll just take a few leaves off that for lunch today Good old kale, sheep tucker. Is it sheep they feed cow to? I think it's cattle, isn't it? Cattle and deer. It's 
fodder for animals, but uh, I'll eat some. Right, who's the victim? You? I'm gonna take you off the plant. I'll follow it right down to the bottom and break it off the rising, and that keeps my wasabi growing better, but also we can eat the leaf. Tomato's still growing in uh, June, although I think this plant's dead. Having said that, the fruit on it, we can get some off there. That'll be alright for eating. Take you, and we'll take you. And that'll probably ripen up there. It's exciting to see these baby wasabis all coming away like this. They're doing so well. Someone's been having a chomp on that, but these guys are really good shape. Well, that one's been eaten quite badly. I'm not sure what is actually eating them in here. Oh, that's a good plant. It's a healthy plant. I'm going to take this off because it doesn't look healthy. I don't know what's going on with that. I'm going to take that off there. Capsicum. Hmm. I'll eat that before it goes rotten, I think. Italian parsley. Down here, some more kale. These young shoots actually, or leaves are quite nice. You don't have to strip them, you can eat them whole. Everything's growing really well considering it's winter. These plants, they don't mind the cold at all. The old sparrows have been shredding these too, look. Bastards. Right, we'll take some spring onion. I didn't realise when I first started growing spring onion, you don't have to bloody pick the whole plant. You just take that off and they keep on growing. These mussel boys are just great, and I've got another source of some coming now, so that's good. Sorrel, the plant that just gives and keeps on giving. It's a great plant to grow. Got our kale, our capsicum or bell pepper, bok choy, sorrel, spring onion, Italian parsley, beetroot leaves, the good old wasabi, some tomatoes, and some bird chewed silver beet or Swiss chard if you're America. Bro and I are cruising into Motawaka. We're listening to some music. A, a good friend of ours, Mark, Mark Weddingkind. I played my very first live gig in a band with Mark and my uncle Kit. My uncle Kit, he died of prostate cancer. And tragically, we lost Mark. How long ago, bro? 22nd of March. 22nd of March this year. Car accident. So we're just cruising along a lot of Waker where Mark lived or worked at least at Bowwater Toyotas and uh, just a lovely guy. My brother worked uh, with him and I worked with him with music. I worked online with him, I think you worked online yeah, too, yeah. bro. Several tracks. He wrote some good songs, he played a good bass, he was a real good rhythm man. So we're just cruising this morning to the Mark and remembering a mate that we lost. It says in it. Sad ending because his partner, Christine, she she died just not uh, last, last, last October. Last, last October, yeah. Um, pancre pancreatic cancer. Yeah. She came around to my house and lovely, lovely person. I think his his heart was broken from that oh, day onwards. Yeah. You wonder sometimes people have a dangerous car accident and die just after the fact. Yeah, life is. Uh, of real good stuff and it's also full of tragedy. Right, I'm off to the uh, med lab. Some blood's done. See the old body still functioning half reasonable. The old needle in the arm and blood test which I do regularly. One of the things that New Zealand doesn't fund is doing subfractions of your LDL or your HDL. So I'm talking about cholesterol. And we don't test for that in New Zealand. In the future I'm going to be doing a, uh, a video on 
our system, our health system, which I know a lot about because I've been through it quite a bit. I'm going to be talking about the two times that I went to hospital and got turned away being told there was nothing wrong with me when I was completely sick. So my journey and my own health journey has been difficult and I've had to push my barrow all the way and for a lot of people in New Zealand it's like that and some people who don't push their barrow end up just being stuck at home, sick, not knowing how sick they are because they just weren't tested properly. It's across the board with everything. It's across the board with our mental health in New Zealand. It's across the board with midwifery. It's across the board with the DHB, the hospitals. Everything is not funded enough and Kiwis are getting a bloody raw deal. A lot of people say, oh, we've got great doctors and nurses. Yes, we have wonderful people doing wonderful jobs, working way harder than they really should be half the time because they're stretched, because the resources aren't there. And there's people on waiting lists for elective surgery with cancers that are growing worse and even dying while they're waiting uh, in some cases. And COVID has come along and what it's done is fuel's become more expensive, food's become more expensive, everything's more expensive and it's just getting harder and harder and we're going to be tightening our belts up more. And in the meantime, a lot of Kiwis that have been working their whole life, uh, who've paid their taxes, are not getting the full care they should be. The food in hospitals is atrocious. And Nelson here, the DHB, most of the food I believe is actually made in Auckland and shipped down. How fresh can that be? The meals are, the dark there. And when I was having my stay in hospital, I said to the nurse, can you please get the dietitian here because I want to talk about my meal. And the lady came up to me, a dietitian, I said, where am I getting my potassium from? Where am I getting my magnesium from? I've got a tiny bit of ice lettuce on my plate some mashed potatoes, a few peas, some boiled carrots that have the tits boiled off them, they're so boiled that they actually become straight sugar, and a piece of meat that looks like an XL cloth, XLO cloth that's been dipped in gravy. And it just There was nothing of nutritional value on my plate at all. She said, no, no, that's the standard. I said, well, the standards suck. I can't eat this, and my girlfriend at the time bought me a proper meal and with some sufficient food. Right, bitch over. If you've had a bad experience with hospital, Share it below, and if you had a really good one, share that too. You told me but, the other day. I walk a bit on the beach, and I get a bit of exercise too. Sexercise? Sexercise, yeah, Sexercise. Sexercise, yeah, <laughs> <laughs> Sexercise, that's about the only exercise he gets. <laughs> Tristan's putting a edge in along here, extending this, so we get a bit more plant space. It's a pretty long row. As you can see, all the twitches in here. We've turned this over a couple of times. I'm going to weed it again. I've got some beans, and I've got some kale. We eat quite a lot of kale. Super Duck wants to come in the garden. So we're going to widen that and just uh, plant this whole lot. I'm just doing this here by hand because there's so many weeds in it. It's just full of this cooch or what do you want to call it? That stuff there. Got to get it out by hand. There's no other way really. The last bottle of kale here. And uh, my brother's discovered his knees don't like gardening. He's got a white bucket that he's tried to sit on that's failed. And he doesn't know what position he should actually assume. How are you finding the gardening experience so far, bro? Oh, it's great. Yeah, I'm, I'm, um, I've probably got the skill of a, um, a gardener's arsehole's hemorrhoid, which is not that high up the ladder of um, gardening expertise, but you know. Oh, you did it right. Your rose weren't that straight, but um, well, you only actually put one plant in this one here, which you nearly killed. Oh, I see you actually broke this off on it too, look. I did that. Oh, yeah, right. It's the only one you planted, bro. I that one there. No, I put that one there, and I've just done that, right? Yeah, but that's okay. Yeah, no worries. Anyway, oh, this is like a garden worm. What's that? Yeah. Oh, a ducky like that, but it's actually a bit of a leather lace. She's now uh, been uh, sent outside the garden because she's tried to rape my gumboot about three times, and she's been jumping on me. She's tried to rape the gumboot's owner. <laughs> In your dreams. Okay, there's our uh, bit of uh, gardening so far. She's not, uh, not going too badly. Got some more kale. So these are our old kale that were planted six months ago. And a few cabbages down there. We're just putting some fresh ones in. I like to stagger the time. And then we're going to put beans in after that. Right, we're finished. We've got our kale here and different types of kale. We've got this one that's a one I don't really like eating that much. I prefer to eat this one. But it's all right. So we've got quite a bit of that in there. And then we've got these here, broad beans. We've got two lots of beans. Broad beans and another variety. I think just a normal bean. Not quite sure. But I don't know what I'm doing. I've never planted beans in my life. It's the first time. All I know is with beans is you're supposed to stake them. I don't know what that means or what you do with your time up, so maybe someone can help me with that because I do like beans and 
This will be the first time I've ever grown my own beans. The soil has got everything in it that you'd need. It's got old sawdust out of the chicken house where they used to lay their eggs and poop on, so chicken poop mixed up with sawdust. It's got compost in there. I've got broken down seaweed, which I've got off the beach. Lots of that there. I've got sheep poo. I've got horse poo that's broken down. I've got lime in there. I've got coffee grounds. I've got the uh, worm juice out of my worm farm. And it's just a small part of it. And I had all that there and I put carpet over the top of it and I left it for six months to break down. Taken off so it's a really good soil. So that will go really well. So yeah, so comment on the uh, the beans because I don't really know. I, I'm i going to finish the rest off tomorrow. Next thing we're going to be planting is garlic. I've got these ones here. got a few of them because I love garlic. But I might make a separate place. I might put my garlic up high at the back we'll plant them and just leave them so i might make a special row of that tomorrow don't know yet anyway that's the garden and that's today's video which has been a bit of a mishmash of stuff that's going on thanks for watching good luck with your own garden and uh be good out there or well, at least try and be good where's my brother gone oh he's on the phone talking to his girlfriend anyway if you can't be good be careful see you later